Hey everyone, welcome back to the Tutorium in Intensive English. My name is Katie and today's pronunciation lesson is about linking and thought groups. So before we get started, let's remind ourselves what we already know about these two parts of pronunciation. So thought groups, remember these are groups of ideas and words. We group these together and these groupings help give us a manageable chunk of language, right? And then we can breathe. We breathe in between these man manageable chunks. And this rhythm of chunks and pauses helps create fluency. It helps create that rhythm. Now linking, we now know, we've looked at linking a lot, connects sounds and words together smoothly. So these connections help create smooth transitions between our words, and this also helps our fluency. So how do these two things work together? Well, within one thought group, we want to link all of the words inside of that one thought group. We want to make sure that we're creating smooth transitions, and this creates reductions. So some of the words some of the syllables will be reduced as we link them together. And this is really important, right? Because this goes back to our stressed, unstressed relationship in English, which gives us our rhythm. It's part of what gives us our rhythm. And this helps make our speech sound smoother and more fluent, right? So we need some sample language to work with over the next slide or two. So I picked this little blurb about thought groups. So thought groups can be especially useful in presentations, speeches, debates, and other semi-prepared public speaking contexts. But creating thought groups will improve your intelli intelligibility in both your conversational and formal speech. Okay, so we're going to work with this chunk of language and we're going to look at the relationship between thought groups and linking here a little bit more closely. So you'll notice I put my thought groups, I just highlighted them, I've added a few extra. Most of the commas and punctuation helped me decide where to put the majority of my thought groups. And then I just had to kind of decide where I wanted to pause for a couple of them. So let's read it once just like this. Thought groups can be especially useful in presentations, speeches, debates, and other semi-prepared public speaking contexts. Notice that was a really brief pause. It was there. But creating thought groups will improve your intelligibility, both in your conversational and formal speech. Okay, so now let's break down all of our links. Let's see them in action. So our first link, we have this first thought group. Thought groups can be especially useful in presentations. Everything in this thought group is gonna be linked together. Unaspirated T in thought is going to link to our G sound. So instead of saying thought groups, I say thought, groups, thought groups. Also, S consonant linking to K consonant. Groups can, groups, groups, groups can. Here, consonant, consonant. N is linking to B. Now, in this case, the B is making N sound like an M. B is pulling the N and making it more like B. With a B, we create a B with our two lips together. We also create an M sound with our two lips together. So N is going to sound like M. Can be, can be. Thought groups can be, yeah. B, yeah, I have my semi-vowel Y connecting these vowel-vowel links. Can be especially 
especially useful one long vowel, vowel to vowel link. Remember when we have two vowels that are similar, we connect them with this one long sound. Can be especially useful, useful lin, consonant to vowel link. So the L is coming in front of the I N. Can be especially useful lin in presentations. So that N connects to the P and kind of becomes M like as well in presentations. In in presentations, pause. Speeches, pause. Debates, pause. Now, my next thought group. And other semi-prepared, okay? So, and other. D connects to my vowel in other. And other. Others, other semi-prepared. Pause. Public speaking, that is a K, which is a stop, so I'm not going to release it. Public speaking, G is a stop, I'm not going to release it. Speaking contexts, public speaking contexts, public speaking contexts. Pause. Now I'm going to skip forward. I'm going to come to the end of this. And again, the N is connecting to my B, and B is pulling the N to make it more like B, and it's making it into an M. In both, both the, both your, your, con, your conversational, those consonant to consonants that aren't unreleased stops or same consonant, just got to get used to gliding from one consonant sound to the next. In both your conversational, pause. And remember, this is an unreleased stop. And formal, formals, formals, formal speech. Okay. So there we have it, most of this dissected. I want to draw our attention to this thought group here in between conversational and and. We don't have to pause there if we don't want to. We could make this one long thought group in both your conversational and formal speech, okay? And when I do that, I'm going to link. Now I am going to link the L to the A in and, conversational land, conversational land, in both your conversational and formal speech. So we can kind of see how linking is important within a thought group. In this case, not a big deal because either one of these thought group divisions is totally acceptable. But we could see if we broke something up that shouldn't be, we could have a problem or we could change the meaning. So our next slide is going to look at the importance of thought groups and linking to meaning. Let's look at this sentence. Jordan, and Be Jordan said Becky is coming over for dinner. Now there are a few ways to divide this and it changes our meaning. Jordan said Becky is coming over for dinner. Becky is telling us this. Becky is telling us that Jordan is coming over for dinner. Okay. What if I broke up my thought groups a little differently? Jordan said Becky is coming over for dinner. In this case, Jordan is telling us something that Becky is doing. Becky is coming over for dinner. Let's look at this example. Dave saw Jason, clearly he was busy. Dave saw Jason, okay, clearly he was busy. So in this case, Dave saw Jason, and when Dave saw Jason, he could see there was no doubt Jason was busy. It was obvious. Dave saw Jason, clearly he was busy. So Dave saw Jason without any obstruction. 
Nothing was in his way. He could see him clearly. And when Dave saw Jason, Jason was busy. This last example shows us how linking can alter the meaning. Nora called Rachel and then Trisha called her. So in this case, Nora called Rachel and then Trisha called Nora. Nora called Rachel and then Trisha called her. Now here we're not linking. There's no linking between called and her. But what if we link call and her and it became Calder, Calder. Nora called Rachel and then Trisha called her. Nora called Rachel and then Trisha called her. Nora called Rachel and then Trisha called Rachel too. So in this case, Rachel is getting two phone calls. Nora called Rachel and then Trisha called her. So linking has changed who is getting called. It's also a little stress change happening there. Trisha gets stressed a little bit more. Okay, so I hope that this has helped you see ways that linking and thought groups are connected. Now, some of those examples were kind of extreme. I don't think anyone is going to really talk like, you know, Jordan said Becky um, <laughs> is coming over for dinner. However, there are cases where how you link something and where you pause will change the meaning and we just want to get better at avoiding that, right? We want to get smoother. We want to have smoother connections between our words. And we want to break up our message in a way that's easy for our listener to understand and helps build our confidence, right? So get out there. Keep practicing. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Mistakes are part of learning. That is the most important thing to remember. And keep your thoughts linked and I will see you next time.